it's part 25 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss selecting, inserting, updating, and deleting data in MVC using Entity Framework. Please watch part 24 before proceeding with this video. We'll be using these two tables, TBL Department and TBL Employee, for this demo. The SQL script to create these two tables is already implemented. I will have the script available on my blog just in case if you need it. Let's select the script and execute it. At this point, we should have the required tables created, so there they are. Now, we want to implement an index view. As you can see here, it's going to list all the employees here. And then we need a link here to create a new employee. And then I should be able to edit the existing employee details as well, view their full details, and delete the employee as well. And I want to achieve this using Entity Framework. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Now the first thing to do is to add ADO.NET Entity Data Model and to do that I'm going to right click on this Models folder, add a new item and make sure you have this data selected or under installed templates and I'm going to add ADO.NET Entity Data Model. I'm going to name this Employee Data Model. Click Add. Now we want to generate our mo you know, model from the database because we have you know the tables already existing in the database using these existing tables we want to generate our models we want to generate an employee model and a department model using these two tables so I'm gonna select generate from database option click next now click on this new connection and then here you can specify the name of the server in my case uh, SQL Server is installed on my local machine so I'm going to specify local just in case if you have your SQL Server installed on a different machine and that's and if that's present in a network then you can either specify the name of that computer or its IP address here now instead of saying local you can also use dot and I'm going to use Windows authentication and then select the database. Now our tables are present in sample database, so I'm going to select sample as the database. We can test our connection, so test connection succeeded, click OK, now click OK. And then here you can specify the name for your connection string. So this is the name that will be used to store this connection string in web.config file. I'm going to call my connection string as employee context. Click Next. Now. Here, this wizard is going to connect to SQL Server and list all the tables, views, and stored procedures that are present in the sample database. Now, you can select your tables from, you know, by expanding this tables option here. I'm going to select TBL department and TBL employee tables. And then, you can also specify the namespace for your models. Now, I want my models to be residing in a namespace called models. Okay, so I'm going to name that and then click finish. So at this point, this wizard should automatically generate two entities for us, TBL employee and TBL department. And these entities are generated using these two tables. Now the table names are the name of the entities and the columns within the table are the properties within that entity. Okay, and then uh, here, look at this. We don't want entities to be, uh, you know, like T TBL employee or TBL department. Instead, we want them as employee and department. Okay, so I'm going to rename them. So I'm going to call this employee. And then look at this. Every employee has a department associated with them. Okay, so if you want that specific department details, then we can do so by using department property. So that's implemented as a navigation property because that is present in a different table. And then uh, look at this, that is uh, again named as TBL department, but we want that property as department name, as department. And then again, along the same lines, I'm going to change the entity name from TBL department to department, and every department can have multiple employees and to retrieve the employees belonging to a specific department we again have you know this navigation property TBL employees again instead of TBL employees I'm going to call this employees let's rename that all right now let's change all the uh, save all the changes and let's build our solution the next step is to actually add the controller. So I'm going to right click on my controllers folder, add a new controller, and I'm going to call this employee controller. And then from the scaffolding options, I'm going to choose my template as MVC controller with 
read slash write actions and views using entity framework that's going to be my scaffolding template and my model class is going to be employee and my data context class is going to be employee context you remember the name of the connection string you know we named it employee context so uh, I'm going to select my context class as employee context uh, you know this class is auto generated for us and this is residing in MVC demo dot models namespace okay and then my view engine is going to be razor click add so this should add employee controller dot CS and along with that it should also automatically generate the views you know to list employee that is the index view create view delete details and edit views uh, as well look at that these views are automatically added to employees folder and this folder is present in the views folder and we also have the employee controller there okay so now let's go ahead and run this application so I'm, I have pressed Control F5 to run the application. So look at this. It's uh, look at the URL localhost MVC demo. Now it says the resource cannot be found. Why is that? Because by default, when I run this application, you know, if you look at the root config file, you know, if here we are not specifying the controller and action name. So if we don't specify the controller and action name, it's going to navigate to home controller index action. But if we have the home controller no we don't that's why we get this error the resource cannot be found now we don't want the application to be navigating to home controller and index action instead we want that to navigate to employee controller and index action so I'm going to change my default controller employee now if I go ahead and run this as you might expect it's going to navigate to employee controller and index action and then within the index action what's going to do it's going to retrieve all the employees and list them for me there okay now this one more change that we have to do by default you know the views that are generated here if you look at the edit view for example at the bottom there is a section called uh, scripts section now I'm gonna get rid of the scripts section we'll discuss more about them in a later video session again in the create view also we have the script section so let's get rid of that as well whereas delete details and index uh, views doesn't have that section section all right so with these changes let me go ahead and rerun this and now look at this I have the index view which is listing all the employees I can create a new employee if I want by clicking on this one look at that I am on the create view I can add a new employee for example test gender test city test and department maybe IT click create so it has added that new employee I can edit the employee details change the department to HR gender to maybe test one two three save that look at that the changes are persisted to the database I can view their full details by clicking on the details link back to list I can even delete an employee look at this uh, in the previous sessions we discussed you know deleting an employee uh, using get request is bad okay that's why when I click on this delete link it will actually redirect me to another page which is going to show the full details of the employee and then it's asking me the question are you sure you want to delete this And if that's the case when I click this delete button the form will be posted to the server and as part of that post process the employee details will be deleted look at that I click delete and the employee details are deleted okay so that's good all this is auto generated for us and if you look at the employee controller here it has got quite a bit of code okay so here we have employee context class and then look at this index in the index action we are creating I mean we are using that employee context object and using employees properties we are, employees property we are able to retrieve all the employees now I'm going to discuss about all the code that is auto generated in a later video session okay but then if you look at this view uh, th these views that are auto generated for us there are a few problems here the first problem if you look at this you know the formatting I don't really like this I want to format this properly and again if you look at the department name you know it just says name I want that to be as department name for example okay and again if I click on this create new look at this without filling any of these details if I click create I'm able to create that employee again if I edit any of the existing employee look at that I want this gender to be implemented as a drop-down list but I have a text box there and then maybe I want here a default text saying um, you know default option select a department 
So we'll see how to implement all this in our upcoming videos. Again, if I click on delete, you know, you can see the delete details here. And when I click this delete button, if you really want a confirmation dialog box, you know, we can do that as well. In fact, we have discussed how to do that in the previous sessions. But however, we'll talk about the code that is auto-generated and to solve these little UI issues in our upcoming videos. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.